In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friends. It's so wonderful to be with you again today. And I have today uh, Rabbi Shmuel Bowman with me. And we're going to speak especially about family matters. And this is wonderful. We're living right now next to Jerusalem. This is wonderful. So Shalom from Zion. And we say that the Torah is coming out of Zion. So this is, we really want to emphasize this year. And we're telling you a bit about that already in, pre, uh, in other, in previous um, program that we wanted to speak about the family, the importance of it, building the blocks so we're happy. And when we're happy, people around us can see and, you know, his society will be good. And if we see things who are not right right now in the world, it's fine. We just have to stop, think how we want to live our life and, and build, build our family and we can be an example for others. And it's very important. We know and you know what's happening all around the world about homosexualities, about kids who can choose if they are women or men, you know, all this kind of thing. So we're going to speak about it today. And you will feel good at the end of the program that, okay, I know I'm here and I can go in the right place with a strong uh, commitment, knowing that the Bible is true and is giving us a, a guideline, very good for us to be happy. So here we go. Rabbi Sh Shmuel, thank you for coming. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you very much. And thank you for the teaching that you are going to give, because I know that we need that, and we need to strengthen the families so they, they know what is right and what is banded, and to put the things right again. Okay, we're going back to the very, very beginning. And it's so interesting that the, the beginnings, the genesis of our entire Bible, which is the core of our life, focuses on the idea of relationships. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so interesting. I think that some people may, th may think, oh, well, the beginning has to do with, you know, uh, cosmetology and the Big Bang and stars and galaxies and really, you know, Hollywood kind of you know, <laughs> sort of things. It's about relationships. This is where it all begins. This so is interesting when you say that because I was reading something last week and they were saying, did you see God created the animals, the trees and everything? They created one man. So he's focusing on one man. And I was like, yes. So right. It, it, it's almost like, you know, here we are in this, uh, in this beautiful uh, studio right now. And there's many lights around us. And so the lights are illuminating mm -hmm. uh, this, this set right now. If all of a sudden only one light was illuminated and it was a spotlight mm -hmm. on a particular subject all of our attention exactly is going to go to that mm -hmm. to that that which is illuminated mm -hmm. and is going to in a sense not eliminate but let's just you know where are we going to put our focus so that's mm -hmm. exactly the case and so when we're looking at the book at, at the bible so and we look at the book of genesis itself the very first time mm -hmm. that man or i'm going to actually say it the way it's exactly translated from the Hebrew, the way human, not men, but human, is introduced is directly in the book of, uh, in the book of Genesis. Adam. Adam. As Adam, mm -hmm. and it's going to be in the, uh, it's going to be in the first chapter, it's going to be in the first chapter in 25, verse 25. And the Hebrew Right, Vayomer Elohim Naseh Adam B'tzalmenu B'kedvotenu. Let us let us make man in our image and in our likeliness, and this introduces the first idea of human, okay, Adam as a human being. And what's really interesting is that as we move along uh, to uh, verse, I'm doing this in the Hebrew, so bear with me. But we, we move a little bit further in the verse, just as we approach verse 20. Uh, 27 mm -hmm. is we get something very interesting. It says here, mm -hmm. Okay, so he's reviewing the fact that hum human being has been created in God's image mm -hmm. and in his likeness. 
Now here's the here's the zinger. Here's the zinger. Bara oto zachar v'nekeva bara otam. And he made he made him her or that mm-hmm. human mm-hmm. male and female. So we're walking around with a human being, okay? Mm-hmm. And this is an idea that's coming actually from a great rabbi who has uh, since passed on, but a, a leader in the Jewish world mm-hmm. in North America. His name was Rabbi Soloveitchik. And he introduces the idea. He says, look at this. We have two atoms going on here. Let's call them Adam 1 and Adam 2. What's going on? The first Adam is this kind of like combination of male and female. We just saw it right here, right in the, in the Bible, in the Torah. And, and, and fine. And he, she, or it, or whatever, as you said, these days a person can choose whatever they want, is walking around. And, you know, he's kind of been commanded to multiply, but it's not really going very well. And he's being told to, he, she's being told to look after the garden and to take care and name all the animals. And to a great extent, he, she is really doing it on his own. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's kind of motoring along. Something very, very peculiar happens, however, if we move to the second chapter of the book of Genesis, and specifically um, verse uh, 18. Mm-hmm. And here we get a new concept. We get a new concept. We get the idea that there's something should be called an Azer Kenegdo. Azer Kenegdo. Vayamar Adonai Elohim. And here's the zinger again. Lo tov hayot adam levado eselo Azer Kenegdo. We've just had an entire bunch of verses telling us about this Adam guy, gal, yeah. walking around, and all of a sudden, everything's going hunky dory. And all of a sudden, God comes along and says, You know, it's not good. It's not good that a man should be without his Azor Konegdo. Mm-hmm. Wait a second. I just thought human being was created, male and female. And he, she is kind of busy right now in the Garden of Eden. And all of a sudden, we're told, actually, it's not good that you're alone. Alone? Wait a second. What's going on here? And it's not good that he's with his Azor Konegdo. Now, Azor Konegdo is actually two words. Mm -hmm. And it has been mistranslated as helpmate. It is not good that man should be without his helpmate. And that's simply not what the Hebrew is. The Hebrew is Azor Konegdo. Azer is to help, mm-hmm. and Konegdo is against, a help against. Well, that really makes things clear, a help against. But that's what it means, not a help mate. We're not talking about a, a hired hand. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about a housekeeper. We're not talking about the maid. We're not talking about an assistant. Okay? We're not talking about a second class. We're talking about a help against. And that's very interesting. We're going to find out in a moment what that possibly means. And so, and, and so it continues. And we get now to uh, chapter, we're still in chapter 2. And now we're in 20 chapter, uh, and by the way, it should mention that a couple of times mm-hmm. Azar Konegdo is mentioned. By the time we get to chapter uh, 22, mm-hmm. Vayomer Adam, okay, verse, verse, sorry, 22. verse 22, mm-hmm. Vayomer Adam Zotapam, I am going to, and this is where we get a whole new name, gets popped into the, into the lexicon. I am going to create from you, Isha. Your Ish, and Ish is spelled, and we should have this on the screen, Aleph Yud Shin. Ish means man. And I'm going to create from you Isha which is spelled Aleph Shin He. They're almost exactly the same spellings, except they each have a different letter mm-hmm. added. And what's really interesting is, is that in Ish, as you can see, is a Yud. Mm-hmm. That's what makes Ish different. And Isha is the He. And what's really interesting is, is that when those two things are together. When man and woman are together, Ish and Isha are together, and there's the Yud and the He. They br- both bring the Yud and the He. Yud and He is, God, is God's name. It's Yah. It's, God, it's Yah. It's yeah. Yah. Mm-hmm. Right? That's Yah. 
when God is in that relationship, oh, so we have great potential here. But look what happens if we remove God from their names. We take out the Yud, let's take out the Yud, let's take out the He, and now both names are the same, but look what the word spells, Esh and Esh. Do you know what Esh is? Esh is fire. Fire. Mm -hmm. Fire. Destructive. It burns it out, that relationship without God in there. It's just going to become consumed. It's going to be destroyed. And it's a very powerful, you know, nothing... It's all there in the letters. It's all there in the letters. And nothing happens by accident. Absolutely nothing happens by accident. And from that, we understand now two very important ideas. Mm -hmm. We understand that, one, woman is not created to be an assistant or a helpmate or a second-class citizen. Absolutely not. That is totally a mistranslation if you think helpmate is what she was, is her job title. She is there to be his equal. Not only that, I would even say she is there to be something even more. She is there to say to him, Adam, Ish, Ish, ish as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, I'm here to help you. But the moment you mess up, okay, the moment you go off that path, Kenegdo, I'm going to be against you. I'm going to be against you. Not against you as an enemy, but against you because for your own good, that's not the path you're supposed to be going down. I'm here as a help against. Okay? Yeah. Powerful, powerful idea. What is your potential, man? What is your potential, man? I, re <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember a friend, uh, Eli uh, no, uh, Yehuda Glick, you, you might know him too, and he was saying, yes, God said to Abraham, listen to your wife. Because she has been out, she has understanding, God gave us. I would like you, if you can speak a bit more about that. Because like again, in, in the world, it's like men doesn't know who they are anymore. And because of that, women doesn't know anymore where, you know, where, where they are too. I mean, it's a right, a right big it's event. It's a mess. It's yeah. a mess. So could you give us, you know, the essence of Ish and the essence of Isha? Because it's all there in the, in the letters that you well, are saying. I'll, 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 s I'll answer by saying the following, first of all. Mm -hmm. You know, I... I don't subscribe to the theory of, uh, of evolution, mm -hmm. okay? I think it's there as, a, as, an, interesting, um, as an interesting model. Mm -hmm. I think it's there for us to have a template for us to understand the natural world around us. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, we have right in front of us mm -hmm. uh, how, uh, how things came about, okay? It's right here in the book of Genesis. I speak, I speak about it in the book too, yeah. There's one exception. Mm -hmm. There's one exception. Sure. Okay, when it comes to evolution. Mm -hmm. And here's the one exception that I subscribe to. And that is, with each living thing mm -hmm. that is created, okay, God continues to improve on it with each new creation. So when we start off with the, the little bugs, mm -hmm. okay, and then when they're removed to the fish, mm -hmm. and then to there to the walking, you know, and we go, we go, we go, and then we get to man. So we're like really, you know, with each new creation, mm -hmm. God makes an improvement. So what's the last creature that God creates? Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. I mean, Isha and Isha. What's oh, the Adam, last? Adam. The last. Oh, the last. Isha. Isha. Ah. The, last, <laughs> okay. the last creature okay. that God creates is a woman, oh, okay. which mm -hmm. means if you follow that line of evolution, then in fact God really, really hits a home run, as they say in the United States and gets it right with Isha. I agree. Okay, okay? <laughs> so, so first of all, what does that mean? Besides the fact that it, 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 I'm, I'm saying right now that, that if you want to talk about the higher levels, mm -hmm. so in fact the woman is actually going to be the higher level. And what does that mean practically? What you just talked about, Bina. Wom a woman is afforded this incredible quality, this incredible insight, insight called Bina. And Bina is about an understanding of how the world works, mm -hmm about how life works mm -hmm. in a way that a man is simply not going to get, okay? She has this ability, and perhaps it has to do with the fact that she can, in fact, create, mm -hmm. okay? Obviously, it takes man and woman to make that, mm -hmm. but the nurturing mm -hmm. and the growing and ultimately the bringing in to the world is happening only from the woman. Mm -hmm. And so perhaps due to that fact that she's able to do that or has the potential to do that, 
gives her that special insight into the way things are supposed to be. That's Bina. It's this deep, deep, deep understanding. Perhaps it could be called intuition, but much, much more. Mm -hmm. Intuition is, is just the beginning, mm -hmm. okay? And so it takes, it's really worthwhile exploring mm -hmm. what Bina is in every woman to be able to say, I need to trust that Bina. Mm -hmm. We live in a world which unfortunately, if it's, if it's, uh, if it's too male dominated, mm -hmm. and by this I mean, okay, give me the facts. It's gotta yeah. be this and show no me the report. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and, and, and you can't quantify it. You can't quantify it. You can't give me the data. Sorry, I can't, um, I can't consider that. We need to move away from that and go back to what Bina is all about. The man is doing something very important too. Let's not discount yeah. him. Yeah. After all, she's the one who is his Azor Konegdo. So therefore, what's he supposed to be doing? Well, what he's supposed to be doing in many respects is making the world mm -hmm. a place where God's presence is going to be sanctified. Mm -hmm. And by doing such, by doing such, this is the great gift. Okay, God comes along just like a parent does to a child and says, hey, <laughs> in reality, parent says, I could do it all. Mm -hmm. And you could just like play with your Lego. You understand? But true love is to give you that opportunity to do what I do. Which is how God is with us too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and God is basically saying, I want you to do, to do what I do. Okay? I want you to have that opportunity. And that's what man is supposed to be doing. But Selam Elohim, we are in the image of God. We are in the shadow of God. That's how God creates us. What does that mean? Shadow as in I walk in his shadow and I'm a nothing? No. It means we're like a photocopy. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're a Xerox, as they used to say in the old days. Okay? We're a copy. Okay? Uh, we're supposed to mimic. Okay? And, and obviously we're not God, but God is, as a parent, yeah, the potential. The potential. It's absolutely amazing. So that's our role. And the woman comes along, and this is where it comes back to the Azar Konegdo, and says, you're supposed to be made in the, in the image of God, and you're not acting that way. Mm -hmm. I'm here to be against you, only so that you can get back on track. Ah, you're back on track. I'm here to help you. Now, that doesn't sound to me like a maid mm -hmm. or an assistant or a second-class citizen. It sounds like a mentor. So we need to rethink why, why she was created. Okay, very, very powerful idea. Now we begin to understand the building blocks of that relationship that is ultimately going to build a family. Mm -hmm. And that being, a, that, because without that, if you have a relationship, if you have a relationship of the husband and the wife mm -hmm. where n neither knows their role, the man doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing. The woman doesn't know what she's supposed to be doing. Sometimes the man is doing what the woman's doing. The woman's doing what the man's doing. The kids are all like, what is going on over here? And they're kind of confused as well. So what kind of a family is going to come out from that? Confused, rather. Yes. Okay? So, and everybody knows... And they can't even do something more after, if it's messy there, what they're going to do messy. Yeah. You know, my father-in-law, who, uh, who is a mentor for business people in the United, the United States, so he has, a, uh, he has an expression um, that, that I think applies here, and he says, if there's an error in the premise, there will be an error in the conclusion, which means if you start off wrong, you're going to end off wrong. Right. So <laughs> and I think we have, we have that situation right here. So, um, so now we have that, but there's, you know, we're going to see how that relationship actually becomes even more practical. Because right now we're, we're rather speaking in rather abstract terms. Mm -hmm. And it's very nice and very pretty, but how do we actually apply it in our lives? Well, we have beautiful uh, um, hints of how to apply that mm -hmm. through the Torah, through the Bible itself. And I want to jump ahead to, again, the book of uh, Genesis. Still, we're still in the book of Genesis. But now we've moved along to chapter 24 to chapter 24, and this is the story where Sarah, the matriarch, has passed away. And Abraham is kind of like, okay, well, it's time to continue mm -hmm. the great line, which will ultimately be the nation of Israel. And he looks at his son Isaac and figures 
he needs a, an Azor Connecto. <laughs> he needs a he needs he needs a uh, help again. Mm -hmm. He needs a, he needs an Isha. Mm -hmm. And he realizes that the Pickens aren't so good where where he's living, you know. And uh, you know the crowd isn't the kind of crowd he wants to have over for Sunday mm -hmm. lunch. You know what I'm saying? So he you know so he sends his servant Eliezer back to the home country. <laughs> <laughs> back to the homeland. And Eliezer, he's, I'm just thinking the name, he's like the one who is going to help. Yes. The help of God. The help of God. Yeah. Oh, no, he, he, he's not doing it alone. He is not doing it alone. He's got, he's got God's help with him. God is helping him. Mm -hmm. And he's going back to Haran. He's going back to the old country, okay, to find a woman of caliber from a family, okay, that gets it. That that's what he does. Fine. We all know what happens. The story with Rebecca. We call her in Hebrew Rivka, mm -hmm. and he's bringing her back. I'm fast forwarding. He's bringing her back on a on a caravan of camels. It's probably a very dramatic, beautiful scene and everything through the desert. You know, I encourage everybody watching to come to Israel, ride a camel, see what that's like. Not easy, but you'll see what Rebecca had to go through. So she's coming back on the camels. And what's going on here in chapter 24? Amazing. Isaac is in the field. He's gone into the field. It's so, so incredible. Because sometimes we think, okay, ready to get married. That's it. Bring him on. Who's it going to be? Right? And it's very interesting that Isaac first needs to go into the field and he goes there to, in a sense, pray, meditate, mm -hmm. build himself. Am I ready to truly be in a relationship? And I think that's a very, very important point that before you even get into a relationship, so make sure you've worked on yourself. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're ready to really be connected to somebody. Because back with Adam and Eve, when we have the first Frodo relationship, mm -hmm. after Eve is, is created, so God says, ah, so now you're two individuals, and what you'll have, what will have to happen is, is that you'll have to both of you have to leave your parents' house, okay, where it's so comfortable and nice, and mom makes such a great soup, okay, and dad's gonna fix whatever's broken, and you just need to like chill, okay, it's so easy, leave, and specifically talking about the man here, he's gonna leave, okay, the, the, his parents' house. And he is going to, Medebek, he's going to become attached. Cleave, I think, is often how the English is, translates it. But it's more of like glue yourself. The word is dabek. It's more than just cleave, because cleave is kind of like you grab onto somebody. And that can be a little bit uh, suffocating. It's like, oh, I've been told that I have to like leave my parents' house and suffocate you, my wife. No, that's not what it is at all. It's not about cleaving. The word is dabek. Spelled Dalad Bet Kuf. Stick, glue yourself, mm -hmm. become, and it even says, Kibasar Achad, like one mm -hmm. flesh, like one body. But wait a second, didn't we have that back in Adam 1? I thought we were one flesh. Yeah, but we were selfish. We were selfish. Mm -hmm. We were all about ourselves. We could do it all for ourselves until God comes along and says, No, 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 no. Ish, Isha. Figure out what your roles are, and now come together as one and begin to create. Okay? Isaac is working on himself so that he can get into that situation. Along comes Rebecca. And four things happen. Four things happen. And I'm now looking again. I'm in chapter 24. Chapter 24. At the very end of chapter 24 in the book of Genesis. And here comes uh, Rebecca. Rebecca. And she comes off the camel. And four things happen. And I'm going to do it in the Hebrew because I, I think the English is just not going to give us the flavor or the definition that we need. And he brings her into his tent. Mm -hmm. Actually, he brings her into the tent of his mother, who is Sarah, Sarah who's passed away. That's one. Two. The Kach et Rivka. The translation literally is that he took her, but it really has to do with um, he is prepared. He shows her that he is prepared for a serious long-term relationship. Number three, 
Betila Lisha, he marries her. And the fourth one, Veoveha, and he loves her. Wait a second. This isn't how it's supposed to work in Hollywood or Disney or anything like that. First, you're supposed to fall in love. And then you're supposed to get married and live happily ever after. Not according to the Torah, and certainly not according to Isaac and Rebecca. Now we have a big problem for that. Oh yeah. Because people think about Hollywood. Got to fall in love. It's all about feeling good. It's all about happy, happy, happy. It's all about happy. So I used to ask my students. I used to say the following: Okay, happy. That's nice. Happy. So now you've met somebody, and why are you in this relationship? Because she makes me feel happy. I'm happy when I'm with her. Oh, and why are you with him? I'm with him because. I am happy. Lovely. Let's fast forward a few weeks. And now, you know what? The bills are piling up, and the weather's lousy. Traffic jam on the way to work. You're not a happy camper. You know what? She's done something that just makes you really unhappy, and he's done something that really makes her unhappy. Are you guys still happy? No. Then, by definition, the relationship is over. But if it's a good relationship, if the relationship is in good, so you know what, you can wake up and the bills can be piling up, and the traffic can be lousy, and the kids can be screaming, and everything can be going wrong. Are you happy? No, not today. But is this a good relationship? Absolutely. That's a success. That that will endure, and that's what we're missing today. Mm -hmm. We're missing. We're locked into happy, selfish. That's Adam one. Adam one what just wants to be happy. I'm a happy guy. I got it all. I'm a man. I'm a woman. I'm just walking around the Garden of Eden. I'm a happy guy. God says, ain't going to work. It's got to be good. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rabbi Shmuel. And we will carry on next week with you to see the following up of Ish and Isha. And from us here from Jerusalem, bye-bye. Don't forget, we're living in the last days. You've been watching In the Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station, for the next program from In the Last Days.